Bill Show is on the road today. I'm at Sashco headquarters in Denver, Colorado. I've used this product for almost 20 years now, and I gotta tell you, this is the best painter's caulking in the business. But today in the Build Show, I suspect that I'm going to school you or your painter on how to caulk correctly. You've probably been doing it wrong. We're gonna meet Les, whose parents founded this company almost 100 years ago, who probably knows a thing or two about caulking. Let's get going. Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Putting a bead of caulking in a joint. Now, Les, what happens to most caulk joints after this gets laid? All right, well, typically what we're doing is in the mind of the contractor, I get it, there's a crack and the purpose of the caulking is to cover it up. Well, our normal tooling method is we put our finger right there and swipe it and we leave ourselves with that 16th of an inch, we clean off the sides and we're done. <laughs> well, my question is, Where's the caulking? <laughs> Looks to me like it's on your finger, not actually in the joint, right? It's Les? on your finger, it's not in the joint. Where should it be? It should be in the joint. That's right. Because the purpose of caulking is to absorb the movement of that house, to seal it for the next 20 years. We had a lot of movement, a lot of rough wear and tear on the house. Yep. And so our message to contractors is no more micro beads. Mm, I love it less. When Makes we come on the sense. job site, we want to see a minimum quarter inch but preferably a three eighths inch. And that pertains to whether you're going around a window or even a bathtub. Yep. Uh, so no more micro beads. Let's get the performance this product was made for. So we're gonna lay down another bead. Oh, that looks nice, Les. Now, if, if you're doing a decent job and you got a smooth surface, because a lot of times on a rough surface, it's a little more difficult, but the idea of tooling is not pressing our finger in so deeply. The idea is you're just floating over the top. It's more an artistic uh, part of the process. You're floating over top, smoothing out any of the lumps. So what we like to do is use what we call kind of a tooling juice, which we use a, a clear glass cleaner. You can use water, but you just lightly go over that bead. Ah. And now you're smoothing out any of the little wrinkles or lumps that you had. So not you're water. Done. Uh, you're actually using uh, something like this that has right. some slipperiness to it. Yeah, but and, not and it allows water. you to float over that bead. If it needs to be pressed in a little bit, you press it in a little bit, but you should not have a lot of caulking on your finger. Yep. Don't get in the goo and you paid some money for this caulking. Let's leave it on the house. Makes sense, Les. Now, if you did want to save a buck, you could, of course, uh, use some dish detergent. Right, you can use soapy water. And put that in your spray bottle and that's your soapy water and that will work as well, but not it will. clean water. Yeah, and we just go with the glass cleaner because it's already pre-mixed. You can grab it. It's an easy stuff to use. Yeah, and by the way, we're using Big Stretch. Uh, I've used this on my jobs for 16 years now, I think, since 2005 long before I knew less or who Sashko even was. This is an amazing product, but you need the product in the joint to do its job. So no micro beads, right Les? No micro beads. So I think Matt, what we'd like to do is kind of start at the beginning because what we're trying to do is put this through the mind of the contractor, especially if you're hiring new people on the job, what are the fundamentals you need to watch for? Yep, I like it, let's go. All right, so the first thing you do is cut the nozzle. Now, um, what we see in the job site, sometimes we've seen this at our own plant, is people are cutting a nozzle and they're flailing it like, you know, we're cutting a fish open. <laughs> this is not exactly how you want to do it because that's kind of dangerous, but if you don't get a smooth cut here, you're dragging that little nub through the caulking and you're not going to get a good looking bead. Great point. So always put it down on a firm surface. Okay. Now, a lot of people will cut the bead like this. But this Straight. is a this is a 90 degree. Yeah. And by the way, many guns have this convenient little hole here. Yeah, the hole cutter. And the hole cutter will cut at 90 degrees. That's now let us what show you. Want, though, you right? uh, yeah, let's show your other you one why. Was more like a 45, wasn't it? Exactly. And what happens with this 90 degree joint or nozzle is when we go to put that down, we're going to put this 90 degrees. It's hard to get a correct bead on there at 90, so isn't it? So it's much more difficult. And look at how many lumps we have. And then if you see the profile of that bead, you're looking at a very convex bead and you're trying to smooth that out. So you have the wrong shape of the bead. It is not pressing that in. If you can see the sides there yep. where it's 
onto the surface of the substrate, you're not pressed in very well. No, you're not. So when you use a 45 degree angle like we did on this side, immediately right out of the gun, you've got a great bead. You're just doing a little touch up. Yeah, that's right. You're not having to rework the whole bead. So what happens is as well. So 45 is not flat is what I'm hearing from you. 45s are the thing. And the other idea is when you have the 45, you want to run that bead parallel with the cut. Okay. So if got you're it. too high, you're going to scrape out too much caulking. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Got if it. you're not parallel, it's not happening. Yep. If you're too low, you're going to go lumpy like the 90 degree one oh, yeah. as well. Yep. So, and you're going to use more caulking. So always keep parallel to the 45 degree cut. Love it. Great advice, Wes. Great advice. Love it. By the way, this is a latex based, meaning water based product. So cleanup's real easy. Uh, you need to clean up a little water, you're good to go. This is uh, a really nice, easy to use, easy to clean up product. So Matt, just uh, because we're looking at this also f through the contractor's eyes, but also the people they hire, the newbies on the job. One thing we discovered about some of the newbies, when you put a caulking gun in their hand and you say, oh, caulk this joint, these people, and, and I understand it's kind of inherent, they tend to hover like they're decorating a cake. <laughs> and I think it's because they don't think if they rest the nozzle here that enough caulking will come out. But what they have to do is be comfortable with the fact that you can put some pressure on the nozzle and that's helping you steady it out. And yes, you can get a good bead. You can get the amount of caulking you need. Yeah, that's awesome. So no hovering. No hovering, that's great advice. Okay, Les, now we're talking about a product that not everybody knows called Conceal. How is right. this different than Big Stretch? All right, Conceal is very similar in technology, the adhesion, the elasticity. But what we've done with Conceal is we've put a slight texture to it so it can go against wood, against brick, mortar, so that you don't have the shiny look around things that are supposed to be flat looking on your structure. Ah. So people are really liking this to trim out uh, wood trim against wood siding, mm -hmm. uh, brick like you see here. Yep. But we'd also like to go a little further than that and demonstrate another principle of caulking. And so what I'm going to do here is this is a rough surface. We're going to start conceal up here. You're push and we're going this to, time. Yeah, we're pushing it. Oh, interesting. So what happens is when you're pushing it, you often get this flare out to the side. You get yep. a lot more lumps. And there's some theory going around out there, and you can see some videos on this, that you ought to push it because it places it into the joint more firmly. Mm, that is just not the case. Mm. So the pressure at the nozzle, that material going into the joint is just the same as if you push it or you pull it. So there's no reason to put yourself through the effort of trying to push against a porous or rough surface because that just gives you lumps and you got a lot more tooling work to be done. Got it. So I want to relieve you of the extra work, Matt. Just pull the caulking bead. You'll get a fine contact with a surface. Really smart, Les. Yeah. Appreciate that. Hey, let's, uh, let's do the long version of this on buildshownetwork.com. But before we end the video, let me make a quick plug for your product line. I lined up your products on the left of Big Stretch as all of your latex, which is water-based products. This is the one that got me started on Sashko years ago, but these are similar technology to Big Stretch. More flex I used at my house on my brick to siding transitions. I use this in my bathrooms and I haven't used slab yet, but this is intended for flat surfaces where you have concrete or vertical surfaces where you've got some concrete cracking and we just demonstrated uh, conceal. You can also get clean seal in the tube, but if you've not used Lexel, this is a solvent based product sticks to just about everything on the job site. And they have a version of Lexel called Through the Roof, which is pretty much the same technology as Lexel, just a little thicker. And this is good up to some pretty high temperatures for the roof. We'll seal your nail holes. Right. It's a pretty awesome product. Yeah, it's a non-slump up to about 140 degrees, which you get on the roof. That's pretty awesome. So um, yeah, and it does stick to everything and it seals the leaks that just asphalt doesn't get to. I love it. And last thing, why don't you end by showing us your Cobra nozzle that you invented less. Yeah, we really love the, the Cobra video nozzle. The Cobra. Yeah. So like when you're on the roof and you're sealing your nails, let's say on a flashing detail, on a roof jack, uh, you know, in the past, people might do that dollop of sealant there. 
yeah. but this nozzle changes the game. Show it us does. how this works, Les. So you can put this on a lap joint or a butt joint, or like you said, cover up nails. Well, the nice magic about this is it puts a nice wide bead out and you're done. Yeah, you don't have to sweet. tool it. It's really firm on each side. The pair of the profile of this is like it's bigger in the middle than it is on the edges. That's pretty so awesome. those edges are really gripping, but you've got enough mass here to take the movement of a butt joint or a lap joint. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Les, thank you so much for the schooling on cock. I'll put a link in the description for Sashco and all their amazing products. I had a really great time visiting their HQ. Uh, Les's parents founded the company almost 100 years ago. His sons are involved in the business now. This is a really well-run family operation. 150 employees here in Denver making this product. I got the factory tour today. Really, really cool. This is an American success story. You should be buying their product. If you want to see the full version of this, Les and I really get into the nerdy, nerdy details. I'll put that over on buildshownetwork.com. You can see that in the description below. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.